we've got the six steps in the creation of the world. And finally, Wiracocha rested on the seventh day. Wiracocha is the god of gods. It is not only represented all around the Inca cultures and all the sites, but also over there. If you look to the left of those storages, you would see a big block of stone with the eye coming out and the nose. Now that is a representation of Wiracocha. And here, it is more than obvious that this is a chair where he could have rested when he finished working. This is where the Incas stored their treasures. But as word of their wealth spread, the temples became fortresses, guarding against enemies, particularly the Spaniards who came in search of gold and silver. The Spanish invasion began in 1533, when Francisco Pizarro entered Cusco. The fighting went on for nearly four decades. But Inca stones were no match for Spanish guns. In 1572, the very last Inca emperor was captured and beheaded, and the once great empire was extinguished for good. The Spaniards quickly stripped the Inca temples of all their treasures, leaving behind only what they couldn't carry. But one site remained untouched, Machu Picchu, high up near the heavens, hidden from the world below. The Spaniards never raided it, because they never knew it existed. Next, an American historian rediscovers the legendary lost city. Was it a secret sacrificial realm, a sanctuary for virgins, or as some suggest, a doorway to the spiritual world? The answer is when we return. The mist-shrouded ruins of Machu Picchu, Peru, capture the imagination. 70 miles northwest of Cusco, perched perilously 9,000 feet above sea level. This small but extraordinary city is the best surviving example of Inca civilization. Deliberately abandoned by the Incas for some mysterious and unknown reason, this symphony in stone lay hidden in the grips of the Peruvian jungle for more than 400 years. Then, Machu Picchu was brought to the attention of the world in around 1911 when an expedition from Yale, including an historian named Hiram Bingham, were told about the site and went and did some investigations there. When we say that the discovery of Machu Picchu was a quest, we really mean it. Hiram Bingham must have come through this way. Um, it is quite difficult nowadays. It was much harder uh, back in 1911 because the vegetation was much higher and uh, the rocks were a little bit more slippy. Bingham was searching for Vilcabamba, which he believed to be the last holdout of the Incas. What he found was nothing short of miraculous. 100 agricultural terraces, each one rising 10 feet high and spanning 100 feet in length plus a vast complex of palaces, baths, temples, storage rooms, and houses. There are roughly 100 structures in all, each painstakingly built from white granite. They brought these stones specifically to, to this, these places. If you look at those mountains over there, you can see some quarries. The Incas brought those, these big pieces of blocks of stones from those quarries, uh, something which is absolutely um, outstanding. Even more outstanding is that Machu Picchu was completely self-contained. There are three distinct areas, agricultural, urban, and religious. Hundreds of steep stone steps connect them. Scientists can only speculate as to why the Incas abandoned Machu Picchu. 
and why they even built it in the first place. Jose Moscoso believes it was used for astrological observations. This big block of stone is called Intihuatana. And the Intihuatana was used to reflect the shadow of the sun in order to find uh, what time it was and uh, which seasons in the year uh, they were in. The Intihuatana stone is said to contain spirits. Break the stone and you release the spirits. Because of their religious and spiritual significance, the Spanish conquistadors sought out these stones and destroyed them. The Intihuatana at Machu Picchu is the only one known to have survived. These stones come from thousands, millions of years ago, and they have gathered all this energy from different uh, natu nature spirits. So you can even feel it when you get closer to it without touching it. You don't have to touch it, but just get as close as you can, right? And you can absorb that energy and then transmit it to your own body. So it's healing, it's healing energy. Jose believes the mystical healing energy can be felt in other places as well. This is a temple of the sun. You can see this big rock laying down here. And this is supposed to be the altar. And this window here is the main window. It's aligned with the rock. So there are two times in the year on which the sun rises and directly protects its um, beams through this uh, window onto this rock. If you just get the clans very, 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 very close to this rock, to this shrine, you would feel the energy. You see my hair standing. And then that energy should be concentrated from your right hand onto your main chakra and the left hand onto your thoughts. So it gives you wisdom, or at least it clears your mind. Perhaps the most interesting theory is that Machu Picchu was a woman's site. The Andes mountain are a vortex of energy or a, door, a portal, a doorway for the feminine energy to enter the plant earth. In fact, the vast majority of graves that Bingham found belong to women. Machu Picchu was a university, or you can call a sanctuary, uh, where women was studying and developing, you know, a high level of spirituality. These women were Akiawasi, or chosen women. Some called them virgins of the sun. We must understand that these chosen women did not serve the Inca as a human being or as a king, neither an emperor, but as the son of the gods. When they were nine or ten, the prettiest girls were chosen to live in the sanctuary of Machu Picchu. Once inside, they would never be seen by the outside world again. Even more mysterious than why it was built is why Machu Picchu was abandoned. Why would people toil for more than 80 years to build a masterpiece and then desert it shortly after it was finished? Many theories exist. An epidemic, a fire, an invasion by the Spaniards, or another indigenous culture. I strongly believe that they wanted to uh, protect their agias, their virgins. Uh, so instead of letting uh, either invasion reach the center, they just took them out and they, they took them somewhere else and they hid for the rest of their lives. No one visited Machu Picchu unless invited. Perhaps that's why no one could remember exactly where it was after it was abandoned. With no written records, Machu Picchu's location was soon forgotten, and the city became lost. Today, Machu Picchu is found by nearly 1,000 people each day. Spiritualists from all over the world trek here because of the site's mystical energy. Cucho, a local shaman, comes to perform sacred ceremonies.